Father in heaven, we're, 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 it's, it's such a, an amazing blessing that we can even call you Father and that you call us your sons and daughters. You say that whoever, whoever believes in the name of Jesus, that you have given us the right to be called sons and daughters of God. When we receive the spirit of your son into our hearts, it, it's the spirit us from all evil. And we're so thankful for that, Lord. We're, we're thankful that we belong to you. We thank you that um, there's nothing that could ever snatch us out of your hand. Not life, not death, nothing in the present, nothing in the past, nothing in the future, not even angels or demons can separate us from your love. And we thank you for that tonight. Open our hearts, Lord. We want to receive what you have to give to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, let's see. We've been uh, talking about some interesting topics like who owns you and your property? We've been asking the question, uh, who is the ruler of this world? And, and the answers to those questions determine a lot about uh, how you live your life and what you think about your liberties and your freedoms. I mean, if the government ultimately runs the world and owns your stuff, then you really don't have freedom. The government has the freedom to tell you what to do. Uh, and then there's, there's other options too. Maybe you own all of your stuff or, or, or maybe you're of those who think that the devil is, is really behind the scenes, pulling all of the strings and operating everything to, to accomplish his purposes. Well, I want to take you back to the ones who laid down the foundation for this country that has been the freest, most prosperous and healthy, generous and blessed nation the world has ever known. We haven't always enjoyed those blessings. It's when we choose to stray, right? And we've, we've had times where we have gotten away from the biblical principles and the, and the ideals of our constitution and we have suffered. Choose to sin, choose to suffer. The path of obedience is always the path of blessing and hope. And that's what we want to do. We want to get back on that path. And we're calling this the American Campfire Revival because when we're on that path, it puts life back into us. So if we had asked these forefathers and foremothers the question, who owns you and who owns your property? They would have immediately answered the question with one word, God. And they probably would have added this caveat. They would have said, we're free men and women because we've been bought with a price. See, we belong to God. He bought us with a price. We don't belong to anyone else. We're not slaves of anyone. We're not slaves of other men. We're not slaves of any government. We, are, we belong to God. Now, I realize that there is a great paradox there. How can you be the property of God and yet be free? And, and, and that's the beautiful paradox that we, that we hold. We hold both of these truths as sacred, that we have been purchased out of the slave system of sin and death by the precious blood of Christ. And God's word tells us that very, very emphatically, that, that you have been bought with a price and you are not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are the property. My body is not my own. It's not my body, my choice. It's not. It's, it's his body, my choice. And my, my choice is a voluntary choice to honor him with my body. My spirit, the life that's within me, is a gift from God. It belongs to him. And in purchasing us out of the slave system of sin, he sets us free. Free to be all that he's created us to be. Free from sin and the power of sin to control me, the penalty of sin which will damn me, and free from tyrants who want to steal from me the things that God has given to me to steward, like my life and my liberty and my family and my property. And, and if we follow his commands, he'll set us free from those external uh, chains and sources of bondage. This is such a beautiful thing and it's so critical for the future of our kids that we understand it. Paul even said this. Paul said, we are his workmanship. We are God's work. Have you ever made anything? Have you imagine if you could make a, uh, maybe you, you made a poem or you made a sculpture or you invented something that was your workmanship. Maybe you carved something out of wood. 
uh, my daughter, Olivia, loves to write poetry. And you know that that word workmanship in the Greek actually is poema, which is the word where we get poem. You and I are God's poem. We are his creation, his workmanship. And I'll continue in the verse, created by God in Christ Jesus. When we come to faith in Jesus, we become a new creation in Christ when we put our faith in him. He actually makes us a brand new creature, his workmanship, and he says we're created for good works. So even, even the works we do, the good works, we were created for those. And then it says, which he prepared in advance that we should walk in them. So, so not only do I belong to God, my body and my spirit, because I am his living poem and so are you, you're his creation and the good works that you and I do are actually, they belong to God too because he prepared those good works in advance so that we would walk in them. So when you do those good works, and, and by the way, the old saying, no good work or, or no good deed goes unpunished, not true. The truth is no good deed goes unnoticed by God because he created you for that good work. He prepared it in advance for you so that you would walk in it and experience the blessing of it and point others to your father and give him praise in heaven for what a blessing you and your work are. Isn't that amazing? That, that's the truth. You and I in the family of faith are the property of God. And as such, we are free men and women, which means we can't be a slave to anybody else. Nobody can enslave me. Nobody can take my, my, my property that God's given me because it all belongs to him. They would be stealing it if they took it because it belongs to God. So the point here is that our forefathers and foremothers never would have had the mindset that, that, that they work for the government and the government owns them and their property. And you and I shouldn't either. That's not the way God set it up. God gave property and he gave uh, your, you, your person made in the image of God. He gave that for you to steward, you and your property. You don't work for the government, at least not in this country. I mean, you might have a government job work for the government. And that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what I'm saying is that there are some countries where the government puts forth the idea that everything in the government, in, in the state, the country, including you and everything that you uh, have belongs to the government. And you essentially work for the government and everything you create, invent, everything that you make, it, it's all theirs. And then they will give to you what they think that you need to be able to have the privilege of living in that country. But everything you have, everything that you are, everything that you do ultimately is for uh, increasing the wealth and the ownership of the government. But not in America. That's not God's idea. And that wasn't the idea of the early Americans. This is why we have such to you and to me. In America, we are the property of God and he has made us a free people. Remember, the Bible says, if the son has set you free, then you are free indeed. You're nobody's slave. You're free from sin internally. If you've come to uh, found a place of repentance and faith in Jesus, and if you follow God's ways, and if we follow God's ways as a nation, we will be free from tyrants and sinful men who look to enslave you and me. My light just went out here. There it is. I'll get it back out again. Um, and we will be free indeed, both internally and the goal is externally. And we were early in our country, but we have the choice to give all of those freedoms and all of the things that belong to God away to other people. And they'll gladly take them if we give them. So here's, here's the point. If, if our pilgrim forefathers and mothers were here, if our founders were here to talk with us today around our campfire, they, they, they no doubt would say something like this. Don't give what belongs to God to anyone else. What belongs to God? You, your thoughts, your faith, your kids, your kids' future, your mind, your heart, your freedom. Don't give your morals away to a godless culture. Don't, 
sacrifice your children to a media that doesn't have their best interests in mind. Don't think that that a state government owns you and your property. It doesn't. God owns you and me, all of our work, all of our everything, and it's in understanding that that you and I become free and we're able to use all of these things to bring heaven to earth. Protect your, your, your morals, protect your thoughts, protect your heart and your passions and your convictions, your faith, your kids, their minds, their freedom. Protect it, defend it. And the first step in you and I doing that is having the mindset of Christ, having the, the, the way of thinking that is not according to this world, but according to the word of God and our forefathers. And that is understanding that you and I and our property, both our external property and our internal property belongs to God. I love the, the lyrics of the song that we heard just a minute ago. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Get that settled in your mind. Make sure that you are a child of God. How do you become a child of God? By faith. Hit your knees, confess your sins, turn from them with all of your heart to the one who can save you and change you and set you free to love him and to love your neighbor. Get that settled in your mind and then understand that you're no longer your own. You were bought with a price. And in being the sons and daughters of God, we are set free. God bless you. Tell everybody about the campfire. Hope to see you guys again tomorrow night.